What's up guys? Hope you guys are having a great day as always. Today we're gonna be talking about recursion. So let's talk about what you'll need to know. You won't really need to know anything. All you have to know, all you have to have is a decent understanding of programming fundamentals, like if statements, loops, for loops, while loops, everything. But yeah, what I'll cover for today is like, what is recursion? How to make a recursive function? And then I'll do a code implementation in Python as well. If you do know recursion pretty well, I suggest that you watch the tail recursion part as well because it'll help you a lot more. So let's first start off with recursive sequences. Before we do recursive sequences, let's talk about regular sequences really quick. So I have one right here. It's called t of n is equal to one, three, five, seven, nine. So you obviously know it's just a sequence of the odd numbers. In fact, we know that the sequence is gonna be two n minus one plus one. Let's do a quick example of t of four. So it's gonna be two of four minus one plus one. This is gonna be two times three plus one, which is just six plus one, which is seven. And then if you look at the fourth term, it's gonna be seven. On top of that, with regular sequences, it's a lot easier to find out what, for example, the hundred and first term is gonna be. You just plug it in. You just plug in 101 minus one plus one, which is just gonna be two times 100 plus one, which is just gonna be 201, as simple as that. Now for recursive sequences, it's a little trickier to understand what the term is. Like if you look at this sequence right here, zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, the way you actually find the values are zero and one are the first two values, and then the next value is gonna be the sum of the two previous values. So that's why two is equal to one plus one, and then three is gonna be equal to one plus two, and then five is gonna be equal to two plus three, eight is gonna equal three plus five, and so on and so on. So if you wanna find the next term, it's just gonna be five plus eight, which is 13. This is extremely difficult to represent as a regular sequence, so we're gonna represent it in a recursive sequence. So for a recursive sequence, you need a base case, and then how you would develop onto that. So this is what it would be, and we can actually test it out. So let's try a t of three. It's gonna be equal to t of three minus one, plus t of three minus two, since n isn't equal to one or two, it has to go to the otherwise part, so we know that that's gonna be the function right here. Now we have t of two plus t of one. And these two values we actually have in the base case of the function. So it's gonna be zero plus one, which is equal to one. And if you look, the third value in the sequence is gonna be one. So I'm gonna have that set aside here. Let's try t of four now. So t of four is gonna be t of three plus t of two. I'm just using this function right here. And we know t of two because it's in that function right there. So we know that that's gonna be one. And we also just calculated t of three. So we can just do one here as well. So t of four is equal to two. And that's the fourth value in the sequence. But let's say we wanna find the 101st term. This is gonna be so much harder to do because now we have to find t hundred plus t of 99. And then this breaks down into T99 plus T98. And T99 breaks down to T98 plus T97 and so on and so on. And it would take a long time to actually calculate this by hand. We're not too concerned about that though because we have computers now that can calculate this in like less than a second. What's more important is being able to find a function that a computer can actually use to calculate that value. So there's actually three things that you need to create a recursive function. First, you need that base case. A base case is something that you don't even use a recursive call for. So in this case, it's gonna be when n equals one or n equals two. There's no recursive call, you just have the value itself, just like a regular function. Second thing we need is a recursive call. So in this case, it's gonna be right here. It's basically when you call the function again. t of n minus one is just gonna be calling this again. And same thing with t of n minus two. It's just using this again. You're probably wondering, how are you even using a function inside a function if the function hasn't even been defined yet? But that's why we need the third most important part, which is the work to base case. The values have to get smaller or smaller, or there must be something that's decreasing until you get to one of these base cases. So for example, if we had t of n instead of t of n minus one, we would be calling this function infinitely and it'll just be going in this infinite loop. That's why we need t n minus one. So even though you may loop for a t n minus one and you call t of n again, our n is progressively getting smaller and smaller until until our n hits the base case, which is two in this case. And then we don't call any recursive calls anymore. So there has to be a finite number of recursive calls. Now let's do a code implementation in Python. All right, let's do the code implementation. So 
Let's start off with the Fibonacci sequence that we just did. So Fibonacci sequence. And I'm just gonna put a few values that we need. So from zero, one, one, two, three, sorry, five, eight, and 13. So I'm gonna create a function. I'm just gonna call it Fib for short. And uh, let's say it takes a parameter of N. So we know that if n is equal to zero, return uh, zero. n is equal to one, return one. Otherwise, what you do is return fib n minus one plus fib n minus two. And now let's try fib of four, just to see if it works, right? So in computer science, you usually start counting from zero. So when you look at the fourth index, it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four. So this returned as you wanted. And if I wanna return zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 13 is seven, fib seven should, re re should return 13. As one, and we do fib eight. It should return eight plus thirteen, which is twenty-one. Let's run that, and you can see it works perfectly. So you can see how easy it is to implement with recursion. You can do it with a loop as well. In fact, in most circumstances, you can replace a recursion with a loop and the other way around too. But sometimes it's better to use one or the other. Using loops can be faster because you don't do as many function calls, but sometimes it's a lot harder to understand. And we'll look at an example of that too. Let's try making a factorial function. So that means that it takes n and it gives us n times n minus one times n minus two and so on and so on. So factorial of five, should give us five times four times three times two times one. So you're gonna see that our base case is gonna be one because we don't wanna keep multiplying by zero and the entire thing turns into zero. So our base case is gonna be one in this case. So let's make it, so define, let's call it factorial n. If n is equal to one, return one. Otherwise, you'd want to return n times factorial of n minus 1. And all we do is we multiply factorial with this value that we have. So it's going to be like if we do factorial of 5, that's going to be 5 times factorial of 4, and so on and so on, until we get to factorial until we get to five times four times three times two times factorial one until we get to our base case. And that's gonna just return five times four times three times two times one. And you know that factorial one isn't gonna make another recursive call. It's in fact, it's just gonna return one because it's the base case. So this is gonna return 120 if it works. Hopefully I haven't made any coding errors. Let's see how it works. It's a factorial of five. Let's run it. And you can see it returns 120 as you want. I made a quick print statement to kind of show how it works. So I just say n times factorial n minus one. So that way let's actually run this and let's print factorial of five again. Five, let's run it. And you see it does five times factorial four, four times factorial three, and so on and so on until it returns 120. But yeah, that's basically the gist of recursion. If you want an exercise to try out, try doing summation. Where n is just gonna be, where n is just gonna return n plus n minus one plus n minus two, all the way up to zero. You don't actually have to use recursion for this because you can actually do this with math. It's very simple, but for the exercise, I want you to try this just doing regular recursion. 
Another thing I want you to take a look at is finding those three things that I told you that you need for a recursive function. So the base case, the recursive call, and the work towards the base case. So if you can find those three cases in this and this, you should have no problem with recursion whatsoever. I'll show it for this example only. So this is the base case itself. This is the recursive call. And this n minus one is the thing that's making it work towards the base case because it's gonna get n is gonna get smaller and smaller until n equals one. Let's say we made a coding mistake. This happens a lot, but you make a coding mistake and you forget that third value. If we save this and then we run factorial five again, you're gonna see what happens. It's gonna be an infinite loop. But yeah, if you figure out the summation function for this, feel free to leave it down in the comments below and I'll make sure that's right. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did find this helpful, please subscribe or comment down below what you wanna see next. Have a great day guys, bye.